Hey guys, today we're going to go ahead and um, talk about these rational uh, equations now. A lot of students have problems with these and they get confused. All of a sudden they see these fractions and they're lost and they're irritated. So what we have to do is we have to get rid of these fractions. I don't know about you, but fractions do make things a little bit more complicated and difficult. So much like when we did fractions as uh, elementary school kids, we need to find the least common denominator. And I'm going to do two examples. This one's going to be the easier one. Now, how do you do that? Well, basically, all you do is look at the denominator. I tell my students, just look at the denominator. That's what we're going to focus on because this is what I want to get rid of. Okay, this is what I want to eliminate or simplify. And if you notice, I have a 3, a 4, and a 12. Well, if you remember, the least common multiple of all those three numbers is 12. Okay, because 3 goes into 12, 4 goes into 12, and of course, 12 goes into 12 itself. So what I'm going to end up doing is multiplying the entire equation by my LCD. Okay, in this case, it's going to be 12. Okay, 12, if you want to put a 1 under it just to keep it nice and neat, go ahead. And remember, whatever you do on the left, you have to do on the right, just to keep the equation balanced. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this whole thing over here. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and do it the long way, and just nice and easy so people understand. And I'm going to multiply 12 times 2 is 24x, 1 times 3, that's a 3 underneath. We have our plus sign there, and then we just continue. Same thing over here, 12 times this whole expression here, this binomial, I have to put it in parentheses, x plus 2. I'm not going to distribute it just yet, okay? Equals, now I got the right side over here, okay? 1 times 12 is 12, 12 times 1 is 12. That's there. Now I can go ahead and simplify. Now I know I'm just kind of doing the long way. Just bear with me. 24 divided by 3 is 8x. Okay. Plus. Now here, 12 and 4. These are on the outside. These are monomials. So I can divide that. Well, what's 12 divided by 4? 3. So this becomes 3 times the quantity x plus 2. Okay. And if you want to know how I got that, well, one number divides both of these. 4. 4 divided by 1. 4. I'm sorry, 4 divided by 4, 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And that's how I get my 3 here. And of course, 12 divided by 1 is, I'm sorry, 12 divided by 12 is 1. Now, if you notice, this is a lot easier to work with. Okay, and it's basically the same thing as we started with. Okay, let's go ahead and solve it. Well, I know I have a 3 out here next to that binomial, so I'm going to have to distribute. So I have 8x plus 3x and then plus 6. Don't forget to multiply the back. And then over here is equal to 1. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. That's going to give me 11x plus 6 is equal to 1. And as we solve this, minus 6 on both sides, minus 6. Be careful, 1 minus 6 is not 5. It is negative 5. Okay, divide by 11. Okay, therefore x is equal to negative 5 over 11 and that would be your solution now this one's pretty simple we use uh, numbers constants okay right here and so that was easy let's go ahead and do one more that's a little bit more difficult all right guys so let's go ahead and do this problem here this is a little bit more difficult more challenging and complicated and a lot of times students they kind of freak out but it's much the same process we need to go ahead and find our LCD but there's a problem here, okay, this guy is pretty much simplified, simplified. This guy is a binomial square, so I need to go ahead and see what this guy looks like in order to figure out what I'm working with. So, let me go ahead and just put them, bring this down. Now, hopefully you remember how to factor. This is a binomial square, so this becomes x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, that's a minus, x plus 2 over x plus 3 is equal to 4 over x minus 3. And you can see now that I can pretty much see what my LCD is going to be. Over here, I have x plus 3, x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, let me write this over here. So my LCD, okay, is going to be, I just need one of these, okay. 
Now you notice I need an x plus 3 on each of them. Okay. Okay, I need an x plus 3 in each of them. And I also need an x minus 3. Well, how do you know that? Well, that's what I see. This guy has an x plus 3. Okay, so I need an x plus 3 in all of them. This one has an x minus 3. Okay, I need an x minus 3 in all of them. Now, what about this guy? Well, I don't need it anymore because I already have it. What about x minus 3? I don't need that one anymore because I, ha I have it here. So I only need one of each. I don't need two. Okay, I remember I want my least common denominator. Okay. So we're going to do much the same thing. We're going to multiply the whole equation, okay, left and the right. And it's going to be x plus 3, x minus 3. And over here, I'm running out of room. Let me do it in small x plus 3, x minus 3 over 1. Okay, now this is nice because something interesting is going to happen. They're going to start to simplify. If you notice, when I distribute this guy over here, x plus 3 and x minus 3, they simplify here, and that's gone. So what am I left with? Well, only the 2. Why? Because this is on the top, this is on the denominator. So I'm left with just a 2. Minus. Okay, well, what happens here? I have x plus 3, x plus 3 simplify, and what do I have? Well, x minus 3 times this. Now, here's one thing, and I did this on purpose. You see this minus? You have to put a parenthesis here because it's a binomial, and you're going to be distributing that negative. So you write minus parentheses x plus 2 times, what did we get rid of? x plus 3. So what are we left with? Just the x minus 3 right here. Okay. Equals. Now we go to the right side. What do we get rid of? x minus 3 and x minus 3. So what are we left with? The 4 times the quantity x plus 3. And there it is. Now we're going to have to do some algebra, but this is more like a level 2 question. It is difficult, but doable. We're going to go ahead and first, let's leave that minus outside. Distribute this, so when you get that, you get x squared. You should get minus x minus 6 is equal to 4x plus 12. Distribute that negative, you're going to get negative x squared plus x plus 6 is equal to 4x plus 12. We want to go ahead and combine like terms. Okay. So, let's bring the minus 4x over here. That simplifies. And I'm just going to do that first. Combine. So, I'm going to have a negative x squared minus 3x, 2 plus 6. Now remember, look at this is a 2, not a negative. Students get confused. 2, what's in front of the 6? It's a plus, so it's 2 plus 6. That's going to give me 8 is equal to 12. All right, I can continue. Uh, negative 12, negative 12. That becomes a 0, so I have negative x squared minus 3x. A minus 4 is equal to 0. You know what? I don't like the way that looks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring everything to the right side of the equal. So this guy comes over, becomes a positive x squared. The negative 3x goes over, becomes a positive 3x. The negative 4 goes over, becomes a positive 4. And it's still equal to 0. Now from here, man, I got to factor it. Hmm. Can I factor this guy? Factors. Factors of x squared or x times x. Factor the 4 that add up to 3. Well, unfortunately, there aren't any. Okay. Now, you can use 2 and 2, but that doesn't give you 3x. You can use 4 and 1, but that's not going to give you 3 either. Okay. So, this is not factorable. And that's okay. So, what happens? What do I do when I can't factor it? Well, you have to use the quadratic formula. Okay, and that's okay. Uh, and this is part of the problem. Sometimes you have to use it. Sometimes we get them factored. Sometimes they're easier. But hopefully you understand that in doing these problems, the important concept is finding the least common denominator, being able to change this up into something that's more simplified, something that we can factor, we can solve. And then hopefully it factors out. If not, well, 
quadratic formula. All right, guys, if you have any other questions, please go ahead and feel free to uh, email me, send me the prompt you want me to do. I'll be more than glad to do it. All right, guys, good luck.